Okay, so here's a relatively quick video tutorial on how I created this little character based on a um, an interview, for, um, a BBC interview that went in a good way, horribly wrong for the interviewee, um, when his kids ran into his home office while he was live um, on BBC's network, and which obviously led to them becoming, uh, whether they liked it or not, one of the most famous families of the on the internet uh, as of as of this past week. So I thought it was really cute, as most people did, and um, just decided to turn the first daughter that walks into the office um, into a cartoon character. Let me. Uh, and this is the actual finished product, but I want to kind of reverse engineer this for you. But let me loop the playback so you can kind of see the finished result. And I've been asked by a few people, actually, um, how I created this. Let me double click the symbol that the character's in just to show you some of the frames and what's going on here. Um, there's not that many frames. I mean, in total, there are 18 frames, right? Two, four, six, literally six keyframes, but 18 frames overall. And the added inserted frames are just for timing, but it's really um, mostly just a pose to pose animation. So how do I do this? How do I create this? So let's in this layer. The first thing I'll the first thing I'll do is, is of course I watch the video. Every animator uses references of some kind, um, and I wanted to start off with just the drawing because I really believe that um, drawing uh, is most of what animation is is based upon. Like really good drawings. Uh, let me go to properties and just knock this brush down a little bit here. This is probably good. So I'll start off with, with a sketch. You know, keeping it kind of simple. Um, well, maybe that's a little bit too big. And just start to find how I want this character to look. I mean, she's a cute little girl with pigtails, right? So I kind of started with something like as simple as this. I experimented with whether or not to add a nose. I think I ended up not using a nose at all. So here's just a mouth. And uh, maybe that's even a little too... Yeah, that's probably good right about there. And then I started to kind of get the overall arching of the back like this. And then she has a leg up like that. You know, so I start to find the pose. Her arm is like this. And hands, I just kept them very simple. Um, these little balls. Again, just to get that basic shape down. That sort of stylistic dance that she had going on. Uh, so here's the back. So here's the torso, and the leg is sticking out about here. So a lot of times I'll start with just a pose. And then this leg comes right down and it's a little bit foreshortened. So I make it a little bit smaller. So yeah, something right around here, which is pretty good. Um, so then the next step is like, or sorry, what's the, the next pose? So I'll then, I'll not worry about the animation so much, but I'll create a blank keyframe in frame two next to the frame one drawing. Turn on onion skin. And then using that as a guide, I can then go and create the second pose. And I think for something like this, I wanted to keep it simple. And so I just really concentrated on two poses. hair in and I when it came to the actual animation I did a little bit more than just two poses I did a little bit of follow-through animation which I'll get into in a little bit so here in the first frame we the arching of the back is like this right so I kind of I need to do more of the opposite for this pose let's throw this arm up here something like this So this is, in a way, a two-framed animatic of sorts. Um, and this, this leg is now going to come up. And this leg is going to come down here. And then a nice follow-through line from waist down to the bottom of that foot. 
And so now I can turn off onion skin and kind of look and say, yeah, that's about what I want. I'm just using the uh, comma and period keys on my keyboard to sort of toggle between these two frames. Okay, and so now my document is set to 1920 by 1080. It doesn't have to be that way, but I tend to work in that um, aspect ratio a lot. And my frame rate though is 24 frames per second. And a lot of times I'll animate on twos, meaning every other frame, which is essentially bringing the animation inside the document to a 12 frame per second rate. Um, so let's do this. Let's knock down off some of these frames here and just play this back in a loop. Now that's too quick overall. So what I'm going to do is insert a few frames and see how that works. It's still a little fast, so I'll start playing with the timing. And that feels a little bit better. And so now what I'll do is actually retrace my steps. And I created a second keyframe again, a blank keyframe, by hitting F7, uh, turning on onion skin again. And now I'll do the actual finished drawing. And from here, I might choose a thicker brush and about the smoothing, I'll maybe make that about 60 or so, or 58. And then actually kind of fine tune the character. And this is how I'll develop an animation or a character for an animation a lot of times, especially if it's uh, you know an animation like this, whereas I'm doing um, more of a frame by frame style animation. Okay, and then I'm not worried about converting body parts into individual symbols. I'm not, it's only a couple of drawings for the most part, so I'm just going to treat them as that. Just two different drawings and toggling in between the two. So you can get the idea. And I might change a few and adjust a few of the lines as I see fit to either exaggerate a little bit more or less depending. So here's what we have. Timing wise, it's pretty good. Okay, and the second keyframe, the second drawing is on frame one. So there was my timing. That's what I ended up with. Um, but I wanted to smooth out the transition between the two. And that's where uh, sort of the optical illusion happens. It kind of it kind of takes this animation, uh, which is an obvious two-framed animation, it kind of smooths it out. And um, now I'm going to show you what that is. It's kind of like a, a style of motion blur. About two frames before the second drawing that's on frame nine in this timeline, I'm going to just create a blank keyframe. Okay, what that does, I hit F7, it creates a blank keyframe. It removes everything that's on the stage in that layer on that frame. Turn on onion skin and select these brackets so that I can see the frame before, which has the first drawing, and the frame, this keyframe here that has the second drawing. So I can see both. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is grab my brush with the black selected, and I am gonna look for, um, let's start with the eyes. So we have this eye here, okay? And it's gonna go to this position here. So you can see the, f the eye in f the, this, right eye in the first drawing and then where it ends up in the second drawing. So what I'm going to do is this. Draw basically a blur. Okay, And then same thing for the pupils. Here's that pupil and this is where it ends up. So I'm going to actually draw a line that arcs. It goes between them. Here's the other eye in the first frame. And then here it is again here. So here are the two eyes. And so let's do the same thing for that. And here are the glasses. And it, in this drawing doesn't have to make sense. Here's the outline for the head in one frame and for the outline of the head in another frame. So 
so I'll kind of join them. I'll average them out with one single line. Same thing for the top of the head. And the arms as well. You can see the elbow here. So here's the arc where the, where the elbow would travel to get to this position. Let's do that here. And here's where the hand would be. So inside of here, let's draw another shape. And then up here, same thing for this arm, just like that. Here's the hand. The hand comes down to here and then here. That works. So we end up with that. doesn't look like anything. It's very abstract. And then for the hair, we can do the same thing. So for the legs, from this foot, this is the left, f his, her left foot. This is her left foot here, and here's her left foot here, here, and here. So since that's in front of us more than it is, it's in front of the leg. I'm going to have that drawn. Um, and then this one is going to go behind it. So then, let's smudge, or smear, or smur, or blur this leg here, like that. I think this should work. Let's see. It's probably not even the same as what I did in the original version. Here's the hands. So, uh, here's the hair. Actually, let's just fill that in and that in with hair color. Here's the yellow for her sweater. And there and there. And then blue for the pants. Let's just do that. And then the rest is white. Fill the eyes with white. So now you can see how you barely see that. Okay. And so now let's duplicate this and bring it to here, the second to last frame, because this is going to loop. And it gets to here and then comes back to one. So it smooths out the transition both ways. Right, from the last frame to the first. And so what I can also do is if we study this, her head is moving um, from right to left, right? like that. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to add a couple of little blurry lines. Just little motion lines like that. Cool. And so now I want to do a little bit of follow through. I mean, we could leave it as is, it works, but I'm going to just do a little bit of follow through. And that's when, you know, so let's say you move an object from point A to point B. Sometimes it, it stops, but other things don't all stop at the same time, right? So in this case, I look at things like her ponytail. I look at things like her ponytails. Um, if she's turning her head like this and it's and it snaps from left to right in this direction and her head stops like that let's do let's create a keyframe two frames later and I'm gonna select with the lasso tool and turn on um, free transform tool or hit Q on the keyboard right this little white dot is a center point everything will scale and rotate based on that center point. But if I move that center point, I can do this. And we can clean up that line a little bit just by drawing over it. And let's repeat this. Yeah, just 
just like that. If we need to clean up some areas, it's easily done with the brush tool. And what I'm also going to do is this. Let's grab her whole head. While it's selected, let's hinge it at the neck a little bit, and let's just turn it a little bit, maybe move it down a pixel or two. These are just the little details that I like to add to what would otherwise be a very simple little animation. And now I'm just fixing some vectors. I could have done this while it was still just a line drawing. Whoops. There we go. But I didn't, but that's fine. It's only a little bit of extra work to clean this up a little bit. I'm just using the um, selection tool. There we go. Okay. So this is the effect. Just that little extra effect. And if we wanted to, you could even do this. Hinge this right at the foot and move it just a little bit like that. It softens. It softens the overall mo motion. So we can do the same here for when she rotates in the opposite direction. We can rotate the whole head. In fact, you know what? Let me show you. Um, one way, uh, another way of doing it is just to delete some of the fills that might otherwise cause a little bit uh, more work down the road. I'm being very sloppy. Hold on. Okay, that's better. And let's rotate her head just a little bit that way. And I'm going to make sure snap is on this little magnet icon there. And I can clean up some of these vectors by pushing and pulling the points so that they end up disappearing or snapping and joining to other points. And then grab the brush and complete that line. Good, good, good. And let's grab that point and just clean that up just a little bit. That's probably fine. And let's delete here that fill and that fill. Repeat. Just a little bit, just a tiny bit. You don't want to overdo it. And let's grab this ponytail. Okay. And then sometimes if I want to clean up lines, little areas like this, I'll use the selection, the lasso tool and select just that area. Make sure the black selection tool is selected and in this tools panel I can uh, click on smoothing and you'll notice what's happening here it smooths it out makes it a little bit easier to do any kind of cleanup after the fact and right here too we don't need to this is getting a little too nitpicky but just to show you that tool it's a nice little cleanup tool and then let's grab some of those colors and fill them in let's go to a previous frame so we can grab that yellow Now let's check that out. Pretty good. Uh, one thing we could do, which we didn't, let's go back to this frame, free transform tool, and let's just about a pixel there, just to add a little bit of follow through. It's not like Disney style animation or anything like that, but um, for a quick little 20 minute character animation that loops, uh, it works.